Here we go first. Woohoo! Baby! And then the smile instantly fades. <laughs> it's got no power at all. Hey, what is up everybody? Today we are going to be going over this beautiful 1997 Mazda Miata. gonna cover some bases because I've been dailing it for quite a while about five six months now done multiple road trips with it fingers crossed everything holds together and I will tell you all the ins and outs if you should daily drive one of these things I'm gonna cover a few different things on this just go with number one we're gonna go over the exteriors of these cars because most of the time you're not gonna find one that's quite as pristine as you might hope. This one, for example, body lines. Look great. All kinds of little issues with this. It's got paint fade. The wheels have been spray painted on it once upon a time. Got a little bit of rust. Actually a little bit of duct tape repair. Overall, this one really isn't in that bad of condition. It has chips here and there in the hard top. And of course, some um, little mishaps in the paint. Other than the fade, it's got dents in the trunk. You can kind of see there from people shutting stuff inside the trunk that does not fit, which this car obviously does not fit a lot, hence also this car has a exhaust system on it so it's a little more noisy than normal and of course a little tag mark on it because it's a drift car baby. You will get wet if it rains hard at all. If it's a sprinkle you might get a little dusting but that's about it. On this one specifically, it likes to leak right along the front edge and also right through on the actual door seal, window seal. Interior wise, number two. This interior actually is pretty nice for the year. I mean, it's got a little cigarette burn in the seat but that's really it. It's pretty clean inside. It also has a tear in the back window. You can see it in the headrest of the passenger seat. And I mean, it's pretty decent actually for what you would expect out of a 25 year old car. That's not really much on the interior. It's just a very basic you got some gauges. This one actually has a touchscreen stereo, so that's kind of cool. Airbags. This one's got a little, if you can see it, we got it. Right back here is, a, that's your OBD2. It's supposed to be secured, but it is not, because why would it be? It's a uh, pretty small car. It's very uncomfortable for long road trips. Um, I am 6'1", and yeah, you have, this is where your bag will be. The trunk will be full of fluids that you need. But <laughs> this car does not have cruise. You might want cruise if you're gonna daily this thing and go any long distance for your commute or anything like this. I got lucky. It's a power steering car, so it's super nice. Look at this, I guess. Yeah. My finger. But also, another very important thing, it's got AC baby! And 
Luckily for me, it works as well, which is super awesome. It is only 1.8, and you will lose mileage on longer trips if you're running with the AC on. As far as mileage, don't be fooled. This car only gets 25 miles per gallon on the highway, cruising about 70 steadily. And that's very not impressive, especially considering how small this car is and how inconvenient it can be. It is not the greatest. The only reason that it is really working for me right now is, of course, the roof rack. You can actually fit one, two, three, four full-size tires, wheels on top of this thing. And yeah, that's really all you can fit on this, unfortunately. Four or five or whatever number we're on, we're not gonna keep track anymore. We're gonna go on to drivability of this car. It is probably the most underpowered car I have driven that is, I don't know, you can't classify it as a sports car. Sorry guys. It's fun, but it's only fun because it's a stick shift. <laughs> and it's fun to whip around corners and such, and it's rear wheel drive, so that's kind of fun too. But it actually has like zero power. Especially with the AC on, it's actually noticeable when you turn the AC on if you're on throttle steady on the highway just buzzing along it will kick on and then you're just kind of and it's terrible i'll do a couple of pulls here and you guys can really experience how unrelentless this power band is so here we are we're going to pull on to the interstate here and i'm going to give it all she's got hopefully i don't get a speeding ticket or like break anything loose like break the rears loose or anything all right we'll start it second gear here we go all right 30 roll this car it's really reliable actually that 1.8 has been treating me very well I put probably five ten thousand miles on this car over the course of a few months and just it's fun it is fun for being such an underpowered little car but the mileage could be better it could definitely use some more space absolutely Especially like passenger space, cargo space, like even taking this thing to the grocery store kind of is uh, eh, You're better off taking <laughs> something else. I mean you have about as much space as a crotch rocket with a backpack in this thing um, But you can fix that if you just get a roof rack which this car has fortunately as far as fun factor I would probably rate this car mm, go with like Honda Civic being like a 2 for scale and then like a Viper being a 10 or Corvette something cool like that or like a big power anything I would rate this being at stock probably a 6 like it's it's a fun car it's cool it gets some looks it does have pop-up headlights which honestly is probably the best part about this whole car <laughs> in closing i would like to just say that this car for being 25 years old would i buy it again i would it's a super fun little car it's fun to tear around corners in it it's super underpowered so you're not going to win any races with it but it it's still pretty fun to drive i personally would stick with the obd2 cars just because they're a little easier on the diag if you work on your cars yourself it's a fun little car, especially if you actually plan to do any like auto crossing, rally crossing, which I have intentions with this car to do, even as stock form, I think it will be a really fun little car to do it with. 
I would recommend that you do your homework on it and see if it will work for you. I fortunately have different vehicles if I have to carry anything, like any big cargo or running to the grocery store or anything like that, longer road trips. It's just, it's not the best daily, but you can daily it. So do it at your own risk. And definitely, definitely do your homework before you actually go out and buy one just because they look cool and have flip-flop headlights. If you could, just smash that like button, subscribe. I'll bring you some more content. We plan to have the RX-8 at some drift events here soon. And yeah, it, it's gonna be a great season.